Hi, I'm Sam Roberts from Roberts Geospatial. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to take a look at how to um, load MRR format rasters into QGIS. So if you're using MapInfo Pro and you have the raster plugin, which is called MapInfo Pro Advanced, then it's likely that you'll be producing rasters in MRR format, whether that be by gridding or through some kind of processing operation. Um, and if you're going to consume those rasters only in MapInfo, well then that's a good choice and it's a good format to use. It's the best. However, if you want to take that raster out of MapInfo and use it in some other software, um, then you're going to need some kind of driver in order to achieve that. So the MRR format is not a simple format at all. It's a binary file. Uh, it's actually a file system inside a file. It's the kind of technology that uh, Microsoft used for things like uh, Word documents and so forth. Um, and, um, and it's very complicated. It would be very, very difficult to reverse engineer. So in order to read these files or to write these files, you're going to have to have a driver that's supplied by MapInfo. Um, and at the present time, uh, they have supplied one driver, which is for the GDAO open source raster ecosystem. So we're going to get our hands on that driver today. We're going to use it in QGIS and we're going to load a raster into QGIS. So on the screen, I have the precisely knowledge community open. And of course, this is where you go for support. And if you do a search in there for MRR and GDAO, you'll find this post by Andre Veslov um, uh, announcing the availability of these drivers for uh, GDAO. Uh, and there's a link there. Uh, and if you press that, um, that will take you to um, the precisely download page. Unfortunately, it doesn't take you to the actual download because that link is, is now broken. But if you get into Google and um, look for GDAL, MRR, um, then you'll find the actual download. Bring it up here. And here it is here. So you've got a, a couple of links. Uh, firstly to the binaries and secondly to the uh, instructions so you can download both both of those things you get a, a zip file for all the binaries uh, and you just need to unzip that somewhere so uh, let's put that down um, and this is what you get out of it so for windows uh, you get a, a two directories so you've got your mi raster binaries so there's the api there's four dlls there and then you have the plugin. And uh, there are different versions of this plugin. Uh, and in there you'll find this file, gdal underscore mrr.dll. So we have to copy those files into the QGIS installation. So um, go to the directory where QGIS is installed. Um, and in there you'll find a bin directory. And if you go into the bin directory, you'll also see in that directory a GDAL plugins directory. Uh, so there's a few DLLs in here. And um, what you need to do is copy uh, from uh, the package that you've just downloaded the appropriate GDAL MRR DLL into this plugins directory. So I've done that already. That's gone in. And then into the bin directory, which is above it, you need to copy the... Um, uh, the four API DLLs, so those four there, they go into the, the bin directory here, and you'll see that I've already copied those in. There they are sitting there. Uh, and in this directory also, if you scroll up to G for GDAL, you'll see a number of DLLs. These are the GDAL DLLs um, that have been supplied with QGIS. Now it only uses the most recent one, which in this case is GDAL 301. And then there's a bunch of um, GDAL executables and their various uh, tools and so forth. So um, once you've copied those in, uh, you can test whether or not GDAL is able to see um, the MRR format. So if you just go into that bin directory and open a command window, so I'll just go in there run that. 
um, you can use a form a uh, command like um, gdal info. So just type that in gdal info um, format mrr. Okay, so it comes back with some information and um, uh, which uh, gives you some verification that it actually understands what the MRR format is. Um, so that's all you have to do. Um, it sounds really, really simple, and it is, but there is a catch. And the catch is here. You can see um, that they have supplied a number of different versions uh, for GDAL. Now, you need to make sure that you get a driver that has been compiled against the same version of GDAL that QGIS or whatever your target application has been compiled against. So um, I should have got QGIS running before. I'll just bring it up. Um, so to find out in QGIS, it's quite easy. You go to the help and to the about box. Uh, maybe bring that across. And it says here, compiled against GDAL 3.1.4, and it's running against GDAL 3.1.4. Now, you need a, uh, a MRR driver that has been in, compiled against the same major and minor version. Uh, so 3 is the, the major version, 1 is the minor version, 4 is the build version. The build version doesn't matter, it's about the 3.1. Um, and at the present time, uh, you can see from the um, directory that I had here, um, precisely only supply 2.4 and 3.0. So in order to get QGIS working, um, I had to uh, contact support and they gave me a, uh, a 3.1 uh, compiled GDAL driver. Um, and, um, and so I was able to get that running. So the version of QGIS that I have is 3.16.1, uh, and you can see the current version is 3.16.16. So even though my QGIS is installed against, is compiled against GDAL version 3.1, it's possible that if you get the very latest version, it will be compiled against a later version of GDAL. So GDAL is currently up to 3.4.2, uh, uh, I think. Um, so I've been in contact with um, MapInfo support about this, and they're aware of this issue. And hopefully they'll uh, soon build uh, a new package which you, which you can download, uh, which will have support for um, 3.1, 3.2, 3.3, and 3.4. Um, and um, I've also uh, had a look at ArcGIS, and I think that it uh, uses 3.3, so uh, we're definitely going to need that new package from Precisely. Uh, anyway, so with this version, I've got 3.1 running. Um, so just to demonstrate that it can uh, open an MRR, go into Add Layer, Add a Raster Layer, Browse to something. So I've got here an MRR which is um, about uh, 160 odd gigabytes. It's a, a trillion cell MRR. So it's a very large raster. Uh, and you can see that QGIS displays it. No worries what's at all, what at all. So um, QGIS is able to access the overview pyramid which is built into the MRR file and it's able to access the statistics that uh, have been computed and are built into the MRR file. Um, so you can display arbitrarily large uh, MRR rasters in QGIS without any problem. Uh, so that's good. Of course, um, there are some limitations. Firstly, it's a read-only driver. You cannot write MRRs, you cannot create MRRs. Uh, secondly, it only accesses the first field in MRR. So if you have a multiple field MRR, you're not going to be able to access uh, anything beyond the first field. Um, and uh, it doesn't access events. So that time dimension that you can store into an MRR, it, it's not able to access that. So it's, there are a number of limitations. Um, there are also some issues around null value handling. And, um, and I've made some recommendations to the um, MapInfo engineers to just make some changes to that driver. 
So hopefully when they update the, the driver package with the with all the new GDAL versions that we need, um, they'll also uh, update the code um, and um, with just uh, some minor improvements for null handling. So that's it for today. I hope you find that useful. If you go to my website, you'll be able to find an article about this and this video. Um, and I'll update that uh, once precisely have updated their um, their driver package and hopefully also test it on ArcGIS. So we'll see uh, whether we get the same kind of result in ArcGIS as we get in QGIS. Bye now.